Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we're going to talk about the campaign trail <laughs> and the lack of primaries in the GOP. Uh, the Re Republican Party is canceling primaries across the country. They're trying to make sure that nobody can challenge Trump because they're scared. They are scared. They're scared of the dissension within their own party. They've spun it to make it say, oh, well, we want to save our money for the real election, and there's no legitimate challengers. No, yeah, there are legitimate challengers. There's a bunch of them. And it's not about money. It's about showcasing the weakness of Trump within the Republican Party. They're afraid to do it. South Carolina, the executive committee of the GOP there, voted to cancel the primary. And that's all fine and good. However, the rules say that they have to do it at the state convention, and they didn't. They didn't. They're going out of the way. They're bending rules they know exist, um, and they're probably going to get sued over it, to be honest. And you have to wonder why. And it's not that they're worried he's going to lose. They're worried. It seems like they're worried that he's not going to win by much. And that's going to show exactly how many conservatives refused to become light fascists and defected, moved away from it. That they made the moral choice and they're like, no, 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 not going to do this. Fool me once, shame on you. That's what they're worried about because if his numbers aren't high in these primaries, and they probably won't be, if the numbers aren't high, well, then campaign contributions across the Republican Party are going to slip because the GOP establishment tied their wagons to Trump's campaign trail. They adopted all of these policies. And it's going to show how weak those policies are. Florida just had a shakeup in the GOP, in the state GOP. And they brought in a new guy to run it who was handpicked by Trump. And when it happened, one of the quotes that went out in a press release was that they're going to work to deliver Trump for Florida. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to. <laughs> You've probably seen the same thing that I have. A year ago, up here in the panhandle, this is MAGA country. A year ago, you couldn't drive across town without seeing half a dozen Trump bumper stickers. Town's like two miles wide. Today, you can drive around all day and not see one. Most have been covered up by bumper stickers supporting the local high school band or something, anything, to conceal that once fervent support for the president. But it's slipping. Of course it's slipping. He's trying to take funding from a school on a military base that serves the dependence of active duty to fund a wall nobody really wants. And everybody knows it's going to be effective, ineffective. It's just a symbol. It's a monument to himself. And everybody knows that. It was a good chant. And that was it. They've seen the ineffective leadership. And they don't support him anymore. So... They're going to try to stop the primaries so that isn't highlighted. I think Kansas is doing it too. At the end of the day, the GOP establishment doesn't want these primaries because they know that Trump's ego can't take this. If he doesn't win these primaries by a huge margin, well, he's going to double down and try to appeal to that ever-shrinking base again. Keep going after him. Keep saying crazier and crazier things. Keep doing things that are morally repugnant. And drive more and more people away. So their hope is that since they're already on the campaign trail with him, the wagons are tied together, well, we're going to circle those wagons. And we're not going to let anybody challenge Trump. And then they're going to count on... Republicans showing up to the polls and just voting the party line. The thing is, I've seen this strategy before. <laughs> the, the Democrats tried it in a recent election. Despite massive opposition to a candidate, they ran her anyway. And they just expected Democrats to show up and vote for her.
and they stayed home. Trump won. I have a feeling that <clears throat> that may happen again. We may see that play out in reverse with a whole bunch of Republicans just sitting this one out because, well, they can't associate with him. They can't continue to support him because of the policies that he has shown. The funny part about it is that this is upsetting rank-and-file Republicans even more. The GOP establishment is making this call to circle the wagons around Trump, and it's causing more dissension because there's a whole lot of Republicans know that know that if Trump is at the top of that ballot, they're going to get slaughtered. People are going to refuse to vote for him, and that's going to affect how many people vote for them, and they know it. There's a whole lot of newer congressmen and senators out there that don't have any power, power within the establishment that know they're going to lose because the GOP establishment can't learn from other people's mistakes. Now, if you're a Democrat, my suggestion, when you hear about the scandals, South Carolina broke their rules, and don't say anything. <laughs> don't say anything. Just let them do it. Let them do it. Because if the election goes the way I think it might, it's going to tear down the entire GOP establishment. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> it's going to be a dumpster fire of just epic proportions. It's going to be great. So let them do it. And if you are a Republican who uh, is one of the moral ones that backed away, you can make noise and you can try. You can do anything you want to. But the odds are they're not going to let you primary them. They've already made the decision for you because this is a great republic. And your opinion doesn't matter. It's what happens when authoritarianism infects a party. The party members, well, they don't get a say anymore. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.